In this lesson, we're going to cover some of the more difficult problems that are related to volume of pyramids and cones. Problem number 19 gives us a cheese wedge and a cheese round. So the cheese round is this entire area here of cheese, and the cheese wedge is this green portion right here. And the question asks us, a wedge of cheese is cut from a cylindrical block. Find the volume and the total surface area of the wedge. So let's take care of the volume first. So we're talking about this green area here. What is the volume of this cheese wedge? Well, what it is really is just one-ninth of the volume of the entire cheese round. And the reason why we know that is because this angle measure here is 40 degrees. So the central angle of this cheese wedge is 40 degrees, which is one-ninth of 360 degrees, or of the total cheese wedge. So I have 40 degrees over 360 degrees, which gives me one-ninth of the total volume of the cheese wedge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the total volume of the cheese round, and then take one-ninth of that, and I'll get the volume for the cheese wedge. So the volume of the cheese round is equal to pi r squared h. So the volume of this cylinder is the area of the base times the height. So I have pi times the radius, 20 squared, times 15, and that gives me 6,000 pi. Now the next thing I do is I just multiply it by 1 ninth, and I end up with 2,000 pi over 3. And that's the answer for the first part of this problem. The second part of the problem asks us to find the total surface area of the cheese wedge. So what we want to do is we want to take the area of the two sectors which are basically the top and the bottom of the cheese wedge. So this part here on the top, and then the respective part on the bottom of the cheese wedge. So if I were to draw this line here, it would be these two triangular areas, the sectors of the circle. Then I want to add the two rectangles, one on either side of the cheese wedge, the flanks of the cheese wedge. And then I want to add a portion of the lateral surface area of the cheese round, so this area right here. Okay, so I take my two sectors. I've got pi r squared, right? So this is a sector, and each sector is going to be one-ninth of the area of each of the respective circles. So 40 again over 360. I've got 2 times one-ninth times pi r squared. And then I want to add the two sides, and I have two rectangles for sides. Both are 20 by 15. And then I want to add this lateral surface area. And the lateral surface area, again, is just one-ninth of the radius times the height. So what I'm measuring here is this area right in here. Okay, so I plug in my values. I get 2 times 1 ninth. It's 2 ninths. r is 20, so pi r squared is going to be 400 pi. So I have 2 ninths, 400 pi for my two sectors. And then I want to add the two rectangles. It's just 2 times 20 times 15, or 600. And then I add the lateral area of the cylinder is just one ninth of the circumference, right? So we're just measuring this part right here, times the height. So this, this portion would be equivalent to the length times the height. And the length is the portion of the circumference, one ninth, two pi r, times the height of 15. So I get one ninth of 600 pi. And that equates to 600 plus 800 pi over 9 plus 600 pi over 9. So your final answer is 600 plus 1400 pi over 9. Problem number 20 is a multiple component question. So we're going to tackle each of the four different questions separately. The first is, well, first of all, we have an ice cube manufacturer. It makes ice cubes with holes in it. And the hole is the cylinder here in the middle of this cube that's a 4x4x4 four by four by four cube. The diameter of the cylinder, the hole, is going to be 2, so the radius is 1. The question is, what is the, value, the volume of the ice in each cube? So what we're measuring here is the volume of the entire cube less the volume of the cylinder. So the volume of the ice is equal to the volume of the cube minus the volume of the cylinder. The volume of the cube is just 4 
times 4 times 4, 4 cubed. The volume of the cylinder is going to be pi r squared, or pi times 1 squared, times 4, which is the height. So the volume of the cylinder equation is the base area times the height. I have the base area here, pi 1 squared, times the height of 4. And I end up with 51.4 centimeters squared. Part 2 of the question asks us, what will be the volume left when 10 cubes melt? Understanding that water's volume decreases by 11% when it changes from a solid to liquid. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is just multiply. We have the answer of 51.4 cubic centimeters per cube. We multiply each of those cubes times, or each of that, the volume of each cube by 10. So the total volume of 10 cubes when they're in ice form is 514 centimeter squared. Now the volume decreases by 11% when it changes from a solid to a liquid, so it melts and then it shrinks. So the, the volume of the uh, ice that is left over is going to be 89%, or 0.89. So we just multiply 0 0.89 times 514 and we end up with 457.8 centimeter squared. The third part of the question is asking us to find the total surface area of the cube. So what we want to do is we want to take the total surface area, this is of the single ice cube now, not of the cube itself. So what we want to do is we want to take the total surface area of the cube itself, and then we want to add in the lateral area, so the inside of the cylinder, uh, as part of the total surface area. And then we have to subtract these circles, which are openings in the cube. So again, the total surface area of the cube itself, plus just the lateral or inside area of the cylinder. And then since we've already counted this area, which is the circle, which is really an open area right here, we have to take that back out of what we've already counted. OK, so I've got this uh, surface area of the cube plus the lateral uh, surface area of the cylinder. Uh, and then it's going to be minus two times the bases of the cylinder. Right, so the surface area of the cube is six times s squared, so the side squared. Each side is four, and we have six different faces. So I have six times four times four, which is six times 16, 96 centimeters cubed, sorry, 96 centimeters squared for my surface area for the cube. Now I'm going to add the inside of the cylinder. It's going to be 2 pi r, the circumference, times the height. And so I have 2 times pi times the radius, which is 1, times the height, which is 4, and that gives me 8 pi. And then I want to subtract 2 times pi r squared. 2 times pi times the radius, which is 1 squared, which gives me 2 pi. So my answer is going to be 96 centimeters plus 8 pi minus 2 pi. So it's going to be plus 6 pi. And that gives me an answer that's equivalent to about 114.8 centimeters squared. The last part of the question says, asks us to find out how the surface area compares to just a regular cube without this hole in the middle, and then uh, the cube with the hole in the middle. What is the difference in surface area as a ratio? So we found that the total surface area of the cube that's in question is going to be 114.8. The total surface area of a regular cube, and we already found that out, is going to be 6 times 4 squared, or 96. So your ratio, 114.8 to 96, is roughly about 1.2 to 1. So there's a claim made by the manufacturer that this particular cube, the one with the cylinder, the hole in the middle, chills or cools water twice as fast because there's more surface area. When in reality, that claim is going to be false because we can see that surface area is only about 20% greater than what would be in a regular cube. 
In the third problem, problem number 21, we're asked to find the volume of a solid below. What we have is half of a cylinder that has two halves of a cylinder taken out of it. So if you look down from the top on the cylinder, you have here is the cylinder that's cut in half. And then out of this half cylinder, we're taking two more half cylinders. So each one of these represents the center of these half cylinders. So what we want to do is we want to find the volume of the half cylinder, the larger one and then subtract the two half cylinders, or basically just one of the cylinders um, that's represented. These two combined represent one full cylinder. So let's find out the volume for one half cylinder. So one half volume, and we'll call the cylinder one, or the larger cylinder, is equal to pi r squared, which is the base area, and my r is going to be half of the diameter, so six. So pi times six squared times the height of 10. So I'm left with 36 times 10, 360 pi, but then I have to take half of that because we're dealing with a half cylinder. So I'm left with 180 pi. Now I want to subtract these two other half cylinders. So I have 2 times 1 half of the volume of cylinder 2, which in effect is just the volume of cylinder 2. I want to subtract the volume of cylinder 2, and that is equal to, well, let's just say this again, 1 half 2 times pi r squared, and r in this case is going to be 3 because this distance here is 3, 3, 3, 3. So the radius of my smaller cylinders is going to be 3 squared times 10, and that equals 90 pi. So I subtract 90 pi, the area of these half cylinders, from the overall half cylinder, and I end up with 90 pi as my answer. In the final problem, number 22, I've got a cylinder, uh, and it's cut at a slant that I see right here. Okay, And what I've done is I've drawn this line across uh, the cylinder just to cut off the portion that's at the slant. So I have one full cylinder here and then I have one half cylinder here. So what I want to do is I want to measure the volume of this full cylinder and then add the volume of this half cylinder. So I know that the radius of both cylinders is going to be 3. I have the diameter of 6. In this case I have a height of 8. So the volume of the first cylinder, the whole cylinder, is going to be uh, the base, pi r squared, times the height, which is equal to pi times 3 squared times the height of 8. So I get pi times 9 times 8, 72 pi. Now the volume of cylinder 2, the portion of it is just going to be half of a full cylinder volume with a radius of 3 again but this time with a height of 4 instead of 8. So I get 1 half of 4, which is 2, times 9 pi, and I have 18 pi. I have these two together, 72 and 18 pi, and I get 90 pi. And just to let you know, the way that I found out that this height is 4 and this is 12 is by drawing a line horizontally that's perpendicular to the height of the cylinder. So what I do is I cut off this bottom portion of 8 out of the 12 and this top portion must be 4.